let's consider this example. We have a town uh, that had 3,024 people in 2018, and it's been growing at a rate of 3.7% every year. Notice in this case, we have a percentage growth rate of change. This means that we're gonna be needing to use an exponential growth model. Our general equation for an exponential growth model is this. P is equal to A times one plus R to the nth power. A is our starting value. And R is our percentage rate of change in decimal form. If we have these two pieces of information, then we can write an equation that has P and N as our variables. N is going to be, well, let's start with, let's start with this. Our starting value here is the town's population in 2018. It's what we know, so we might as well make it our starting value to keep our life easy. So this A value is going to be 3,024. So P is equal to 3,024 times one plus my rate. Well, my rate is 3.7% every year, and I can change that to a dec decimal form, moving the decimal two places over or dividing by 100, and I get 0 0.037 for my R value. So instead of the R here, I'm going to put in 0 0.037 to the nth power. This is the general exponential growth model for this situation. And once I do this, as long as I know a value for n, I can figure out a value for p. Now, 3,024 was my starting value, which was the population in 2018. So when we look at our n, our n is usually measuring time, so it's going to be the number of years since 2018. And it's important that you note this because our starting value was in 2018, so it has to match this starting value here. This is going to be really important when we go to make predictions and use our actually use our equation. P is whatever it is that we're trying to measure, and in this case, that's going to be the town population. So let's suppose that I ask you to use your growth model to predict the town's population in the year 2025. Well, 2025 is a year, and so I can figure out what value to plug in for n in my formula. n has to be the number of years since 2018, so we need to figure out how many years have gone by between 2018 and 2025. And we can just subtract to do that. 2025 minus 2018 is seven years. And so if I want to predict the population in 2025, I have, I'm right here, P is equal to 3,024 times 1 plus 0 0.037 to the seventh power so that we get the population seven years later. Now, at this point, we need to just do this calculation and we can do that on our calculator. Now, for all of the videos from here on out, I'm going to be using a program called Desmos.com. Um, called Desmos. You can, there's a web version of it that you can get by going to desmos.com slash scientific. It's also a free app available for both Android and iPhone. So you can go to your app store and search for Desmos Scientific Calculator. That's what you'll be seeing in all of the examples here. It's very user-friendly and even better yet, it's free. Um, so I highly recommend you use this particular free calculator. Um, either on the web or on your phone as you're doing your homework and also to follow along with this text. So if I pull out my calculator, this is what the um, this is what the app looks like on my phone and the interface for the computer is exactly the same. So all the buttons are in the same places and it works exactly the same way, which is really nice for demonstrations. So in this case, I want to go 3024. Oops. 3,024. Then notice that in my equation, I have a parenthesis here. 
Now that means times, but Desmos is smart and it knows that that means times and it's gonna multiply by one plus 0 0.037. And then I wanna take it to the, and then close the parentheses. The next thing I wanna do is take it to the power of seven. And my, um, my exponent button in Desmos is this one, a to the b power. So that's the function I'm gonna push. And notice that the cursor is now up above the level there blinking and waiting for me to put in my exponent. I'm gonna go ahead and put seven in. Uh, the answer does show up here on the right, but it's not a bad idea to go ahead and hit enter just to make sure everything's done. And in case you wanna use that answer in the future for something else. I love Desmos because it gives you a nice running tally of previous calculations so that you can use those. It types it exactly the way you see it. It does all the order of operations for you. Um, it's just really, really user friendly. And this will have, this calculator has all of the functions that you'll need for anything in this class. So here, my answer is 3,899.7. And I was looking for the town's population. So it might make sense to go ahead and round that up to 3,900 people. So we started in 2018 with 3,024 people. We grew by 3.7% every year, which means in seven years down here, the town will have grown up to 3,900 people um, by keeping up with that, with that growth rate. Let's take a look at another example here, working kind of the same way. Here we have a $40,500 car this time it's going to start losing 18% of its value each year. Again, because we have a percentage, we are prime game here for an exponential growth model. And we're always gonna start with the same general equation. P is equal to A times one plus R to the nth power. All right, let's go through and identify. If I wanna write a general equation, I need to identify the A and the R that are specific for this problem. A is my starting value, which in this case is the value of the car when I buy it. So A is gonna be $40,500. And my rate is this 18%. Right now it's in percentage form. I need to write it in decimal form, move the decimal two places over and I end up with 0.18. Now, you do need to pay a little bit of attention here, similarly to what you did with growth models with linear. And that is if you're ever losing instead of gaining, we need to account for that in our rate of change. So instead of getting a positive 0.18, we are going to think of this as a negative 0.18 when we plug this into our formula. So these are our different values. So if I go here, P is equal to, my A is 40,500 times one plus negative 0.18, or we can just write that as one minus 0.18 to the nth power. If I ask you for a general formula, it should still have N and P in it. You are identifying the A and in this case, the R for the situation. So this is my formula. It's a good idea to know what these N and P stand for. N is usually gonna be our time that goes by. Uh, we're measuring our rate of change in years, so it's going to be the number of years. We don't have a starting year, um, but it would be reflect um, how long has gone by since the value was 40,500. So we can just say this is the number of years since new. P is going to then be the value of the car. And it's a good idea to identify your units. So here we're doing dollars and um, we can have that moving forward. Now, once you have an equation, again, we can use that to make plans and predictions. Um, in this case, let's suppose that I want to know the value of my car after four years. Maybe you want to, you're ready to sell it and you want to know what you can sell it for. All right, well, let's go up to our equation. I want to know the value of the car, which is P. I put in all the rest of my formula here, 4,500 times one minus 0.18. And I wanna know the time four years later. So four is the number of years since new and four goes up here in our exponent. Uh, we can pull our Desmos calculator back out again. If we clear that out, 
I guess you could leave it there even. We've got 40,500, oops, one too many, 40,500 times, and it has the parentheses right there, so we just put it just like we see it, one minus my rate, 0.18, and again, it's minus because we're losing value, not gaining value, and this time we want to take it to the fourth power, so make sure you hit that A to the B button here in the middle on the top line. That gets your cursor blinking up at the top and we want the fourth power and we can hit enter and notice that after four years, I've lost a lot of value in my car. It's only now going to be worth $18,310.93 when we go to sell it. For money problems, I'll usually round it to two decimals. I'm not super picky about uh, that level of accuracy on your answers. Just be consistent and make sure you show the work of what your equation is and what numbers that you're plugging in along the way.